How are you all doing tonight? My name is Big Bob the Boy, and welcome to my TBC Hunter Essentials Guide. That's right, it's been a long time coming, but it's here. We're going tip to butt, covering the Hunter and its essentials today. Everything you need to not suck, unless you really want to. If you haven't already watched my video on Hunter Changes into TBC, I'd recommend that one as well. It's not necessary, but this stuff might make more sense if you've watched that one. In this video, I'm going to cover talents, stats, new skill usage, shit, the macro, rotations, pets, professions, consumes, and enchants. So that means we're not going to cover PvP. I might do that in a future video, but would honestly rather do it a bit into Season 1 because things can change very quickly. Macros and UI. I get asked about that a lot. It'll get its own video. And we're not going to dive into the deepest, wettest parts of Hunter Theory Crafting. This is the essentials. So let's start with the most essential of essentials, talents. BM. Yeah, it's BM. BM has absolutely turned shit around in TBC, so we'll talk about serve first. Survival is in a really, really good place. It's got good damage, good utility, good flexibility, and good survivality. You actually have quite a few options for your spec, but it's kind of a balancing act. Our goal as serve is to have 100% uptime on our exposed weakness talent while also doing the most damage we can. With the gear we have on beta, I'm at 25.99% crit on character sheet and recount shows that true on a target dummy. So I try to build with Master Tactician because it seems cool and I like the name. But unfortunately, I couldn't get that to work. It seems like the prog rate on Master Tactician is just too low. I would only recommend going that route if you need readiness for some specific situation. So that leaves us with two options. One going for improved aspect of the Hawk and one going farther into marks for barrage. The testing I did, I was doing almost the same damage with the two specs, but Impoc seemed like it gave me a little more uptime on exposed weakness, and it was pretty close to it being permanent. Throw on raid buffs and it probably is permanent. I think I would go with the Impoc spec, but they're both really damn close. Marks. Hmm, marks. Alright, Marksman is in a sad place, and I'm very broken up about it. I mourned for literally minutes. The problem Marks has is not that it's bad, it's actually pretty goddamn solid. It just doesn't fit into raids as good as BM or Serve, it's in between them. You do more damage than Serve, but you don't have as good of a buff, okay? You do less damage than BM, but you don't have as good of a buff. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, so BM's Ferocious Inspiration stacks. That, plus the damage difference, makes it worse than BM in literally every raid situation. Unless your pet is completely worthless. That probably won't happen, but if they do some raid tuning, and we get a few fights where pets have no uptime or very low uptime, then Marks could have a place. It would outdamage BM, and TSA would get some use. But right now, it's flaccidly relegated to PvP. Beast Mastery. BM is once again certified dope shit. It's actually really easy when it comes to BM talents, and that's how we like it. There's one raid spec, and this is it. There's essentially no reason to deviate from this spec, outside of some really specific situations, like take a point out of improved men pet for bestial swiftness for an outdoor fight with a lot of movement okay you probably won't want to change this okay imp hunter's mark is also an important talent i should mention one hunter in the raid needs to take it so who should it be uh the one that will do it seriously that's the most important part whoever is going to be the hunter that will keep it up and not forget about it but i'd probably have the survival hunter do it Stats and gems. You know by now how agility has changed in TBC and we get some new stats. So how does our stat priority fall in TBC? Uh, complicatedly. Obviously hit is still incredibly important we don't want to miss. We'll need 9% for skull level targets. And you can get hit from outside of gear so don't forget that. If you've got a Draenei, improved fairy fire, that kind of shit. 
Now after that, it's agility. This is where most of our gemming will be. Even though we only get one ranged attack power per point of agility, it's still very strong. And then crit. We have enough crit based abilities like kill command and expose weakness now that crit is even more important than it was in classic. And finally AP. Pretty much no reason to gem AP. Even the higher AP PvP gems are likely not worth it for raid gear. Same goes for the JC only one. Okay, so where do haste and harpin fall? Well, haste is actually really, really good. It might even be better than edgy in a lot of cases, but it's complicated. For one, we don't really have haste gear in phase one. We'll talk about this more in the rotation section, but haste is likely really really good as long as you know what you're doing if you don't know what you're doing you are much better off with agility because it will change how your rotation works there are also potential breakpoints where it's not a gain to get more haste unfortunately there's only let's call them basic sims right now so the finer points of stats we really can't be sure of yet now armor pin is in a somewhat similar situation because there's really no Arpen gear in phase one. We'll get some with Beast Lord, and that's mostly it. So that's something we won't really care about until pretty much Sunwell. Your gems are mostly going to be edgy, as I mentioned earlier, because hunters are, if anything, delicate. Hunter is also lucky in that there is a good heroic gem drop for us from Black Morass. It's edgy and hit. Nice. We will need two yellow for our phase one meta gem, Swift Skyfire Diamond, so that gem will fit there nicely. Although once it's out, we will want Relentless Earthstorm Diamond. If you do need to fill a blue spot like a good socket bonus, shifting Tanzanite from Heroic Mechnar is probably your best option there. Okay, new skill usage. Let's talk briefly about new skills and how to use them. Aspect of the Viper is easy. It gives us back mana. Pretty simple. For leveling and soloing shit, it's excellent. And really helps with our sustain. But for raids, we really don't want to use this. We want to stay in Aspect of the Hawk as much as possible, especially if we're spec for Imp Hawk. If we're not in Hawk and we spec for that, we're basically wasting five talent points. Only go into Viper during raids if you're on track to be Oom. Um, or situations where there's like downtime and you can't attack kill command so this is a bit of damage coming from your pet every time you score a crit you can't use it while casting but it is off the global cooldown so you can use it while doing like arcane shot it's also important to note that our pet doesn't hit our target with it it hits its own target it's also very important to keep in mind that this is what's going to set up our four piece set bonus or Beast Lord, and that can be a very big part of our DPS. Now, what about macroing Kill Command into your other abilities? Uh, I would have said no, but actually this works is better than I thought, so I'd need to test this more to be sure, but when I tested this a bit on the beta yesterday and today, it actually worked kinda. There was a bit of a queuing issue with Kill Command, but macroing was working if I spammed my buttons. You can probably do this better manually, but macroing was not a total failure, so if you're someone that likes to spam your buttons, you might want to give it a try. Snake Trap. It drops snakes that poison people. Figure it out. Steady Shot. We'll cover that in the rotation section. There's not much to talk about here. It's just a new shot with no cooldown that makes up a big part of our new rotations. Misdirect. Okay, it misdirects the aggro generated by your next three shots onto whoever you misdirected. Sounds simple, you'll generally use this for pulling, that's the most obvious use. Aimed, distract, arcane is probably the best option for threat and you can do two of those while moving. But it has other uses, it's not a bad idea to throw it up during fights for extra threat on your tank as long as you've got the time to do it. It's also great for directing mobs that spawn during fights over two tanks. You can even use it to kill people in your group you don't like. It has a lot of uses when soloing as well, you can park your pet someplace safe misdirect onto your pet and then get to wherever the fuck you need to be. You'll do that a lot in dungeon solo farms. Just be careful on AoE situations, it only sends mobs that were hit to your pet. Like this. Usually. 
The macro. It's dead, okay? Quit asking dead. Absolutely deaded. Alright, so I tried this a lot on stream. I tried a lot off stream. Not one macro worked properly. And I tried at least two dozen different macros. Now, I did get some macros to work about 70 to 80% of the time. So if you're just wanting something to press while you're watching Netflix or doing something that leaves you with only one hand to play WoW, those would be about the only situations worth using a macro, even if it did work 100% of the time. Now that mercilessly drags us into the rotation. <sighs> All right, I was trying to avoid it, but it has to be done. The rotation for hunters is just fucked. Look at this. Ugh. I'm not in hunter for math and graphs and shit. I'm here to shoot things. People have gone crazy with this shit. Honestly, some of these rotations I don't think are even possible. I've tried. What I want to try to do for this video is simplify all of this shit into something that makes sense. Isn't overly involved and actually still does good damage. I want to get you to 90% or more effectiveness. If you want to go that final 10% and really stretch Hunter to the brink of tearing like tissue paper, we can go over that on stream or in another video if there's interest. So similar to Classic, we are basing our rotation around auto shot weaving. We want to do as much shit as we can without clipping auto shots, unless that ends up in a DPS gain. Where I would start is with the 1 to 1 rotation. We're not going to worry about haste yet. This is the most basic rotation. We just weave steady shots in between auto shots while doing kill command. It's not hard. Completely unbuffed, I'm doing about 1130 DPS on this dummy. Now, as simple as that rotation is, it's actually important, especially as our haste goes up. Let's try the same thing, but multi-shot replacing a steady shot. All right. This is also easy, and it's also a little bit more damage, but at a huge mana cost. Now, it looks like there's a little bit of time after a steady shot. Could we slip in a multi-shot after steady shot? Before the auto shot? Ah, uh, not really. We are clipping there. We are at a 2.03 attack speed, and that's just too fast. But what if we had a slower weapon? Actually, yeah, then we can do that. And of course, that means we can also throw arcane shots in as well. With a 3.0 speed weapon, you shouldn't clip. With a 2.9 speed weapon, I think you'll just slightly clip, but it's still worth it. This is now called the French rotation, but it's the badass kind of French, like GIGN and their revolvers. Not like the surrendery white flag type of French. When we are at slower speeds, around 2.1, this is pretty much as good as it gets. Now, after looking at those rotations, let me explain how I personally keep this straight and simple when I have no haste. I go French. When I have haste, even if it's just improved Hawk, I swap to one to one with the multis if I can use them. And then you can ride one to one all the way until haste buffs bring your range speed to 1.5. At that point, shit gets totally fucked and you're mostly just auto shotting either two auto shots for one steady shot or three auto shots for one steady shot but we're talking about really high amounts of haste at that point maybe not even possible to reach that number so that's how i look at this this makes sense and is easy for me while being i don't know like 90 95 percent efficient now some other people like to just sort of feel their way through this instead of thinking about rotations just watch your shot timer, cast steady ASAP after an auto shot, engage when you can fit in the multis and arcanes after the steady. That works for some people. Now what about melee weaving? Uh, it, it can actually be really good. Raptor strike hits really hard. Melee weaving kind of follows the same principles, but can be a bit more complex since you have another timer to watch. I'm not going to cover melee weaving really in depth here. If you want to dive really deep into this, I'll link to what is probably the most up-to-date, most deepest, and most clearest 
write up on hunter rotation theory crafting in the box. Alright, I don't know if I was able to simplify and explain this well. It's kind of a difficult thing to explain. But the final thing to keep in mind with rotations, this could change. I mean, I swear there's some weird queuing issues with Steady Shot on the beta right now. Maybe they'll fix that. Maybe it's all in my mind. <sighs> Alright, that sucked. Moving on. Pets. This is very sad, but Muin Serpent might be dead. Its resist chance seems a little too high. And I'm going to stroke my own shaft a second here because I did predict this. I mentioned many times that I thought P servers had incorrect resist for wind servants, and that was why they were able to pull ahead of Ravagers on those P servers. Someone in the Hunter Discord managed to find the original TBC info for wind servants lightning breath resists. It was 13% for full resist, 5.14% for partial resist. At that point, wind serpent loses two Ravagers and cats, even with a fairly high crit rating. The only places I can see it pull ahead is if you have a bunch of enhanced shams and no Ellie shams. Then all their lightning breaths are getting buffed by storm strike. Exceptionally high armor targets, like if you're missing armor debuffs. And maybe fights with lots of movement where having a ranged skill on a pet is exceptionally valuable. But how far behind does that leave Wind Servant? Actually, I don't think it's that much, and the same goes for Cat. So from what I've seen, yes, Ravager is the best, then Cat, then Wind Servant for DPS, but the differences between them until I see good evidence otherwise are very small. So if you have a specific reason you want a Cat or a Wind Serpent outside of just DPS, you're probably fine. And for pet training, Serpent Swiftness and Avoidance. Give all your pets those. That's like 90% of it. For the other one, Zot on the Hunter Discord came up with this, and I, I, I agree with it. I, I, there's nothing I can do to improve on this. Obviously, you want to tailor resistances to what you're fighting, but this is a good general spread for Phase 1. Basically, your pet gets its max focus dump, gore or call, max bite if it can learn it, dash or dive, and then split resistances with rank 5 fire, rank 5 arcane, and rank 2 frost or shadow. Pretty simple. Pet treats, yeah, because they are now good boys that get treats. We get Sporling treats from Sporgar Rep, but the better one is Kibler's Bits from the Cooking Daily Quests. It's what you're going to want to use. I thought I remembered reading they would be available from Phase 1, but I couldn't find that anywhere on like Wowhead, and I don't have any characters with cooking on the beta, so Kibler's Bits probably are in Phase 1, but it's a small chance they aren't. This guy here gives you the cooking dailies, and the recipe can be in either reward. Professions. Alright, this is a weird one, but blacksmithing is a really strong option. If you're going to melee weave, it's hard to pass up axe smithing. Even when not weaving, the axe isn't incredibly far behind. I'm not going to do this fuck leveling blacksmithing. But if weaving is your thing, you'll use your blacksmith axe until twin blade from Kael'thas, so that is worth it. Now for normal people, we've actually got a few options. My money is on engineering. NG still gets a lot of really interesting shit to play around with, like a teleporter, new repair bot, invol belt, rocket boots, all kinds of shit. I'd say NG is also the best profession for solo farming. We get a mode extractor for moat farming. We get Cephorium for popping locked doors, and it even works on locked chests and TBC. You still have bombs, which help plug the ever-present hunter hole, AoE. Phase 2, we get our dope goggles. Plus, we can make arrows and bullets. There's no weird trade NPC for bullets anymore. Bad thing is, I don't know what phase the ammo will be in. I checked the vendor that sells the schematic, like, a lot of times, and it wasn't there on the beta. It was originally a 2.3 item, so probably phase 2 or 3. But the best thing is, of course, the line machines. Come on. Look at that hula girl. Alright, I wish it wasn't a gnome hula girl, but it's, it's the best we got, alright? So, what about that leather working? Uh, it's, it's, it's not great. Now the drums have been nerfed, that was kind of the last dick in the coffin for leather working. Primal Strike is pretty good, but it isn't this, and it's only really good when you have the three-piece set bonus. P 
plus crafting the whole set is going to cost you 18 heavy not hide leather. Oh, all right. That's not bad. Three primal nether. Okay, that's that sucks, but it's doable. And 14 primal might. Jesus Christ. I don't think leather working is worth it. If you've already leveled it up, maybe it is for you, but not for me. All right, obviously we do have two professions, so some good candidates for the other one would be enchanting. It's nothing special until phase three, because that's when the good ring enchants drop, but it does go well with engineering for soloing shit since you can DE the BOP drops. I would also say jewel crafting. JC is really good because you can make a lot of gold with it, but early phases we're not really gonna get any bonuses. The JC specific gem is AP, not agility, that sucks. But really late in TBC, there's an excellent JC only neck that we would very much like to get as hunters. Consumables. All right, consumes are a lot easier in TBC, and we can thank Hunter Jesus for that. We have one or sort of two main buffs. That's our Guardian and Battle Elixirs. Elixir of Major Agility for Battle, and Elixir of Major Mage Blood for Guardian. Now, don't let Major Agility fool you. It's actually like Mongoose where you gain crit as well. I think about 0.91%. Those two are a good combo. The other option is Flask of Relentless Assault. Flasks count as both elixirs, so you cannot mix these. 120 AP is a lot of AP, but I kind of think the elixirs win here, although it's really close. You have to kind of balance Am I going to get any use out of that mana back? Is that going to let me stay out of Viper? Usually, I would say yes. But as long as you have either of these up, you should be fine. Food buffs are really simple. Grab hit food if you're not hit capped. Grab agility food if you are. In TBC, each food buff actually has two versions now. A meat version and a fish version. Warp burger versus mudfish. Fish is almost a vegetable and this one is covered in mud. We are not animals. We will take the warp burgers with a beer. Normal stuff you'd expect is still there, like dark runes, mana pots, scrolls, drums. All that shit doesn't really change. Now, from here, buffs can get a little sweaty. Haste potion. This is a good DPS potion, but as we talked about in the rotation section, this can be tricky to use, although worth it. You'll want to use this when you already have other haste buffs up, and that probably will push you into the two auto shots, one steady shot. Maybe even three auto shots, one steady shot, but maybe not quite that far. Flame cap. These are herbed and okay, this is a pretty small buff, but you may as well throw them up. The only thing they cool down with is I think dark runes and like health stones. And then stones. Yeah, this... I won't lie, this sucks. So these did change on the beta, but I'll talk about how it works right now. If it changes again, don't get pissed at me, because that might happen. So right now, adamantite weight stones are amazing. Adamantite sharpening stones aren't that great. The difference is subtle. Both grant weapon damage, and both grant crit. But the sharpening stone only grants melee crit. Weight stone crit works for our ranged weapons. This means if you are not melee weaving, we are stuck using fist weapons. That is fucked, but it is what it is. We are stuck with fist weapons and weight stones, or melee weaving and sharpening stones. Maybe you could get away with a legacy and not weaving on serve, but uh, probably not. Don't forget the pet food too, that counts as a consumable. Enchants. Thankfully enchants are also not very complicated. Actually, they're really, really simple. So I'm just going to read them all briefly here. Head is Glyph of Ferocity from CE Revered Rip. Shoulders, doesn't matter. You can use Might of the Scourge or the Eldor one or the Scryer one. Chest is plus six to all stats. Gloves is 15 agility. Bracers is 24 AP. We actually get a decent bracer enchant finally. Pants are Nether Cobra, of course. Or Cobra Hide for the broke bastards among us. Actually, early on, Cobra Hide will make more sense. Nether Cobra does take a primal nether. Boots is 12 agility. 
weapons. We want 220 agility enchants for one-handers. And there's a 35 agility for two-handers. Ranged, actually two, maybe even three decent options. Biznix is still a thing, and if you're not serve, you might want to use that early on when you've swapped a bunch of gear around and are low on hit. Now, between the other two, Eternium is probably a little bit better, but they're both really good. Eternium recipe does drop in Kara, so it might be a couple weeks before you can get it. I would say it really doesn't matter. They're both close enough that without a good sim, it's hard to say which is better. And a super secret bonus note on Aldor vs. Scryer. So, it, it doesn't really matter which way you go. I already did a video on this, and I'd still probably lean towards Scryer. Scryer gets a nice quest belt, Aldor gets a nice quest ring, but both of those are replaced. And even the enchants are very close, with Might of the Scourge probably still being the best if you feel like going back to next for it. What is potentially a big consideration though is if you are going to level blacksmithing, it's probably going to be a lot cheaper to level smithing as Aldor, but it could be the other way around. Aldor is going to need a lot of primals, Scryer is going to need a lot of shards. People say Aldor is going to be cheaper, but I don't know. I would assume shards will be cheaper based on how things have played out in Classic, but like Nostradamus, I cannot tell the future. Well, this was supposed to be a short video on the essentials, but it ended up being pretty long. Also, it took forever to make and is coming out mm, just a little bit late, only a few hours before TBC actually launches. Shit. <laughs> anyway, I am fucking tired. I have nothing left to give you. Like, subscribe, and other shit. Here's the outro. If you enjoyed the video, hit that sub button, bell, like button. I can't believe launch is here button, share button, all that other shit. I appreciate each and every one I get. This channel even has memberships now. You can check them out by clicking the join button right by the sub button. It is absolutely the best way to support the channel because ad revenue does not do it. And you'll get some really cool emotes. Plus, it's way better and cheaper than a Twitch sub. I stream right here on YouTube, usually at least once a week. I hope you'll join me. But that is going to be all for this one. I really appreciate you all watching. And I will see you all for the next one. Level 70 and I'm still getting FD resist and tire mall. This is some bullshit. Absolute bullshit. I'm fucking done. Fucking done, son.